What? Pull it out, man. <laughs> so as a novice, that's what happens. That was a very, yeah. like it barely got you. Hey guys, we're doing something we have never done before. This adventure was a little bit of a stretch for me, but I couldn't say no. We're going python hunting in the Florida Everglades. The Everglades is one of the largest wetlands in the world. The subtropical wetland ecosystem spans one and a half million acres across South Florida. There's a multitude of wildlife that call the Everglades home. Alligators, flamingos, and small mammals like raccoon and rabbits, just to name a few. But there's a species that doesn't belong, and they're one of the most damaging invasive species the area has ever seen. We're talking about the invasive Burmese python. We signed up to take part in the Python Challenge. It's a state initiative held annually to rid the state of the invasive snake and to raise awareness. Cole and I met up with some reptile enthusiasts who shared the unique perspective and also gave us a firsthand look at the problem. So we woke up early, got on the road, and headed down Route 41 to the Everglades to meet with the crew from Affordable Wildlife Removal. We met just outside of Everglades City and headed east toward Miami. We are on the east side of the Everglades, closest to Miami, and we are riding the dike. We actually have the professionals with Affordable Wildlife Removal in front of us. Uh, these guys are um, professionals. They do this for a living and they are helping us to scout. I hopped in the back of the truck with David Weathers, also known as the Cobra Kid. He's been an animal and reptile enthusiast his entire life. I grew up here. These are, these are the Everglades that I grew up in, catching snakes. I'm, I'm just so passionate about being around animals. Like, it's always captivated me. We searched along the dike looking for pythons in the high grass and on the edge of the road. After about two hours and not a glimpse of a single python, we decided it was time for a change of scenery, so we headed south. Well, I, I like walking down this end and then coming back around and back in this way. Oh, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, it all connects. So we can go either direction. Okay. Um, I've seen python out along this edge, as well as a lot of natives too. Isaac Rimpey owns Affordable Wildlife Removal, a, a veteran-owned business focused on humanely removing you know, nuisance animals throughout the state. So what do pythons typically eat? Uh, well, their primary food source is going to be mammals. They really like mammals. It's a, you know, a big part of their diet. It's going to be rabbits, raccoons, possums. Uh, Size-wise, they'll also enjoy rodents, otters if they get the opportunity. But they'll never miss an easy meal. They're opportunistic feeders, so they're going to eat on anything that they can get that they can digest as a low energy item. So birds really do fall into that category as well. Which the biggest concern here in the Everglades is we do have so many endangered birds from the years of plume hunting and development to where losing animals to invasives such as pythons and tegus is pretty rough. <laughs> We walked all around this area known as Sparrow Island in hopes of finding a Burmese python. The Florida Wildlife Commission says for every 100 snakes you pass, you only see one. From the FWC perspective, it's a big problem. Uh, these species have been around since really about the 80s. Uh, we've been actively removing them for years. We've removed over 10,000 at this point. They're a problem because they're really competing for our native resources. If you had to guess how many pythons do you think are in the Everglades? Oh my goodness, such a hard number to guess. So over the past three or four years, we stopped counting at 300 snakes and we did that two years ago. That mixed with the other snakes that everybody else is catching and the frequency that we still see them. Some nights I see more pythons out here than I do water snakes and natives. Hundreds of thousands of snakes. I mean, wow. we're very limited to the access that we can get because of the structure of the glades. There's only roads in certain places. Boats don't work everywhere, even fan boats. So you're left with only being able to hunt specific spots. And if we're catching such large consistencies in specific spots, you can only imagine what's out there that we just can't get to. Isaac and David are part of a group of reptile enthusiasts impacted by a new Florida law. 
The Burmese python, along with 15 other high-risk non-native reptiles, have been added to Florida's prohibited list. That means it's now illegal to transport a live Burmese python in the state. If you catch it, you have to kill it. It's not their fault. I mean, they were put out here by accident and some by purpose, but not by their fault. So I feel like if there's even a thousand of these animals can go to a home outside of the state of Florida and never have to worry about getting stabbed in the head, then those thousand animals should have a chance. What we're gonna look for out here, especially as the sun's starting to set, is we're gonna look for snakes traveling. They're gonna be moving along the edges and up and over. They like to bask in the evening. The biggest part of them making it through the night, again, loss of energy is a big thing for reptiles. They wanna do minimal loss of energy. So they're gonna come out and they're gonna bask on the road. They're gonna absorb as much heat as they can until the sun's gone away. At that point, you know, they'll start to slither off and go hunt. They're kind of charging their batteries for a night's worth of hunting. So oftentimes we'll find them traveling along the edge of the levee. Sometimes you'll find road stretchers is what we call them, where they'll be all the way across the road. Come on. <laughs> How did you even see that? Yeah, this, is, this is actually a male box turtle, you can tell from the concave in the shelf, it was a female, it would be completely flat. This guy's, what would you say, he's at least 15? Yeah, Dave? Yeah, he's old, old man. Oh, these are our eastern box turtles. You can see they how they have a two mile name. range. Yeah, from where they're born. So we're out here right on the edge of the Everglades and you can see the power lines right over here. It keeps us real close to the Redlands and we're actually not too far away from the facility that was damaged during the hurricane in 1992. Uh, hundreds of snakes were reportedly released by the storm, um, but they do have python issues that go back as far as you know the 70s and 80s. So that wasn't the primary cause of it, but we do see a lot of breeding snakes coming into the population upwards of several hundred. The first Burmese python was found in the Everglades in 1979, and it's believed it was a former pet that was either released or escaped into the wild. Since then, tens of thousands of these snakes have taken up residence in the Everglades, and the big problem is, is that they're eating the native animals there. As we continued walking the area through the tall grass, my eyes started to play tricks on me. <gasps> what? What? I don't know, a snake. What? I don't know. It was right, it was right by his foot. Are you serious? Yeah. What did it look like? I don't know. It was black and oh. yellow. <laughs> I don't know. No. <laughs> I'm about to get on your back. <laughs> did you really see one? Yes. Where was it? I was kicking the grass. It was like right here. there. It was right. It's right here. It's look, 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 look. It's right Where? There. It's right there. It's right there. I don't even see it. Where? Where? Look. It's, is that not a snake right there? Well, I swear, I saw something. No, that's not it. No, are you, I. Are you sure it wasn't him pushing his thing down and pop back up? I, I swear. It might have been because I'm kicking it. It was something right. was black and yellow, and it was about like this big black around. Black and yellow. That's probably a coral snake. That, meant, that got my blood, that got my heart rate up. <laughs> You're seeing things. No, I'm not. I promise. I. <laughs> Hold on, babe. Look, can you carry me? <laughs> Hold on. Slow down. Slow down. I'm not even kidding. It was it was like right, a couple inches from his foot. To this day, I'm not sure if my eyes were playing tricks on me, but it was only a few short steps later we came across this big eastern diamondback rattlesnake. Wait, so that's a what? That's an eastern, eastern diamondback and rattlesnake. And that's native? Yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Start rattling here in a second. Now let me be clear, we were not looking to catch a rattlesnake, but David has been licensed in the state of Florida for more than 30 years to handle and breed venomous snakes. There was a bulldozer pushing a new easement right toward this snake's den, so he wanted to give it a shot. 
I mean, basically what's going on out here, especially for the native animals, aside from the invasive species causing all these environmental issues, is you have stuff like this going on where this trail that the animals in this area have become used to, it's, they've become accustomed to it, it doesn't really bother them, they lay out here and get sun, and they have their den areas around here just off the side of this grass area. Well, when you see them plowing 25 more feet into that area, something's going to get destroyed and generally it's going to be an animal's habitat and it's going to be you know the demise of that animal and that just seems to be an ongoing problem not just in florida but all over the country is habitat destruction is the real reason we have endangered species going on in this country and we just saw of course the rattlesnake yeah i mean we just saw that eastern diamondback and her den was less than five feet off of this trail and like i said they're destroying 25 more feet and widening it and it's only 30 yards from where we just saw her. So I'd say within six months, that animal, if it's not relocated, it's probably not gonna live. As day turned to night, our search continued in the same place it started. We've got two vehicles, one in front of us, one here. And we're checking these sides of the levee because the pythons at nighttime like to come up and they'll kind of like just periscope up out of the grass. You'll see them st sticking their heads up, kind of looking around. And they kind of just sit there in a trance, absorbing their energy or whatever's going on. Heat, just environment, smell. I'm not sure exactly what they're doing, to be honest. Um, but that's one of the ways that we find them. And when you do that, you can pretty much walk up to them and grab them. But once you do, when they realize what's going on, they become pretty feisty. And We rode for hours and nothing was moving on either side of the levee. At a quarter to 1 a.m., finally, some action. A banded water snake. I've never held a wild snake before. We can tell. <laughs> but it wasn't what we were looking for, so the search carried on well into the early morning hours. With all good, you know, good luck on our side, we'll come across at least one. Mm -hmm. Might luck out and get a lot of them, you never know. I mean, we've caught in over 10 of them in a night and some nights. Some nights you go out here and spend all night and you don't catch anything. It was starting to seem like one of those nights David talked about. We had spent all afternoon and it was now almost 3 a.m. and still no sight of a python. I was exhausted, and I kept dozing off in the truck as I gazed out of the passenger side window. We'd been at it for almost 16 hours, and at this point, starting to make our way back west. This was our last hopes of finding a python. At almost 3.30, I was abruptly woken up to Cole saying, wake up, grab the camera. I jumped out of the truck at just the time the guys were pulling a seven foot, eight inch python out of the bushes. Pull it out, pull it out. Come on. I got it. Pull it out, man. I got it. I got it. Who wants it? I do. Cole wanted to try his hands at catching it, but the snake had other plans. This much. That's a hard one. <laughs> I'll be in those bushes here in a second. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got me. Go be quick, right? Yeah, I'm gonna sting like stinging metal, no problem. <laughs> like a pro. <laughs> That's good though, because now you see it firsthand. Your turn. Why no, I'm people okay. Just come out and do this. It's like we've shown them. So as a novice, that's what happens. That was a very yeah. like it barely got you. I mean, yeah, barely got me. Of, it definitely got me. You got me. Well, you pulled back to it the same time. Yeah, I did. I did. He he. See the aftermath back. of that. Not bad. Just uh. There. If you feel like there's a splinter, it's probably a tooth that'll come out in there. So you feel it Let me see up this. I'm just going from one to ten. How much would you rate the pain? The pain, the pain's not bad. Um, it just, it literally yeah, felt like, uh, like getting a shot. That's exactly, that's exactly what it felt like. So at one point in Florida, and still in several places all over the 
world nation. These are very desirable pets. And they're absolutely gorgeous. Their skin's gorgeous. They're the second largest, longest, biggest, heaviest snake in the world. And, uh, you know, it really sucks that we have to euthanize these. This snake can be purposed. This snake is not too old to be calmed. The snake is not a threat to anybody at this moment. It's not like we're gonna die interacting with it. It is really a shame that we would have to euthanize such an animal as this. They deserve a little bit better than that. We woke up the next morning and drove to the FWC check-in station to turn in the snake. Up until this point, I've never had any positive emotions towards snakes, and don't get me wrong, I am still not a reptile enthusiast. But after seeing the new perspective and learning about how passionate these guys are, it was sad to not have any other options for the snake. This was such a great learning experience for us, and I hope it was for you too. Like and subscribe, big things are coming very soon, and you won't want to miss it. Thanks for watching.